Welcome back to Cardinadies.org. Today we're continuing with three months of modal logic, a sequel to 100 Days of Logic. In this video, we're continuing with temporal logic, looking at alethic versus temporal modal logic. Kind of finally seeing how temporal logic fits into these other modal logic and, and how it compares. So, temporal logic, unlike other modal logics, has two sets of predicates, such that both will always be and has always been correspond to necessary or obligatory, while has been and will be both correspond to possible or permissible. Hopefully that makes sense. So we have two strong tense operators, H and G, which both correspond to our little square box necessary or OB obligatory, and two weak tense operators, P and F, which both correspond to possible, our little diamond, or permissible, PE. But to make that even more clear, let's look at how we compare alethic modal logic, deontic modal logic, and temporal modal logic. For temporal, we'll split it even into two between past and future. So if we said it's necessary that P, that's going to be isomorphically similar to it's obligatory that P in deontic moral logic, and it's going to be isomorphically similar to it has always been the case in past temporal logic, and it will always be the case in future temporal logic. It is possible that P in alethic modal logic will be isomorphically similar to it's permissible that P in deontic modal logic, it was the case at some point in the past that P in past temporal logic, and it will be the case at some point in the future in future temporal logic. Now, our change of modal quantifier, it's necessary that P is equivalent to, it's not the case that it's possible that it's not the case that P is going to also map onto both of these other kinds of logic. So, in deontic logic, we see that as it's obligatory that P is identical to, it's not the case that it's permissible that not P. In past temporal logic, we see that it has always been the case that P is identical to, it's not the case that at some point in the past it was the case that not P. We'll slow down for a second and look at that. That seems to make sense. If it has always been the case that P, that means that there's no point in the past such that it's been the case that not P. Assuming that either P or not P. And it's going to always be the case that P is identical to, it's not the case that at some point in the future is the case that not P. Hopefully both of those make sense and follow along with our ideas of kind of change of modal quantifier. Which brings us to the first rule of inference for our temporal logic, the change of temporal quantifier, CTQ and proofs, which can either be HP is identical to, it's not the case that P not P, or GP is identical to, it's not the case that F not P. Hopefully that makes sense, and hopefully you understand why those follow. If they don't make sense, check out our other change of modal quantifiers for either deontic logic or alethic modal logic. Up next, we are going to be looking at our first full axiomatic system for temporal logic. We're going to call it minimal temporal logic, also known as KT. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org and watch a new video every single day for three months with the three months of modal logic. Stay skeptical, everybody.